Hello everyone, how are you? This is Dr. Kim. Thank you for again tuning in and today we have a case of two impacted maxillary canines. And let's take a closer look at what these canines have done to the adjacent teeth. So now um, patient information, 14-year-old uh, male with uh, the impaction of maxillary canines, again, can readily see that from this 3D rendering view. So as we always do, let's take a look at the axial view. As you know, I, as I mentioned, I think several times in my previous videos, you must get in the habit of watching the, or evaluating the entire scan from one end to the other end of the scan. I have cropped uh, my scans in order to uh, protect the patient related information. So you're not actually seeing the entire scan that, it's, that has been captured. Um, so keep in mind that the area of interest is in the anterior maxilla. As, you, um, as we confirm again, this patient is currently undergoing orthodontic therapy with arch wire and brackets that you see on the, along the buccal surfaces of these crowns. And uh, as we go right in this area, we can again verify the two central incisors and lateral incisors. And here we have canines that are positioned um, palatally to the lateral incisors, which again, we saw that in this 3D rendering, right? But one other issue that we're having or complication that we're having with this impacted canines is that Unfortunately, these two uh, have caused a significant root resorption of the lateral incisors. So then they uh, bring out the crosshairs and rotate the volume and take a look at the relationship between the canine and the lateral incisor. So look over here, uh, your sagittal plane, and the canine has been erupted enough so that the alveolar crest appears uh, disrupted such that if you were to flap this area, I think there's very good chance that you're going to be able to see the crown of this canine. But if you look at the overall root morphology of the lateral incisors, uh, I hope you can all agree that there is rather significant root resorption. Really, the uh, normal morphology should look something like this, if you can follow my cursor. But I would say that we've lost at least one third, if not half of the root uh, volume or root length. Um, really, there's not much valvular bone support at the lingual aspect and at the buccal aspect, I'm measuring approximately uh, seven, seven millimeters of uh, uh, root length and al alveolar bone support. Now, uh, if we were to look at the other side. So let me go ahead and rotate the volume once again. Okay. We see similar features here. Canine being erupted quite a bit with thinning of the adjacent lingual cortical plate. Um, but at least uh, the way I'm seeing it, we've lost even more uh, root here to do external root resorption and the alveolar bone support is quite compromised at this point. So depending on where we measure, I'm getting anywhere from one, uh, one to, oops, I can't seem to click this one. Okay, so one to four millimeters of bone support. And with this much of uh, root resorption, uh, I would be curious to know what the mobility of this tooth is. Um, in addition to that, one thing that I uh, was paying close attention to was the size of the cr uh, crowns of these lateral incisors. It was clear to me that uh, tooth number, let's just call this um, 10, uh, is smaller than the size of tooth number seven. So uh, initially I was considering whether this is the primary lateral incisor that I was looking at. Um, obviously, I don't have the full clinical history, but I think it's safer to say that uh, this is most likely 
PAG lateral, which is a normal anatomic variation for a permanent lateral incisor, where it's uh, in general much skinnier, thinner, and um, uh, and smaller in terms of the size of the crown. So that's probably what we're looking at here, PAG lateral, and um, I'm seeing nice uh, thick enamel layer. So again, I'm, I'm convinced that this is most likely a permanent tooth rather than primary dentition. So in summary, we have a patient with two impacted canines that have unfortunately caused rather significant resorption of the lateral incisor. So with this new information that the clinician has now, uh, I, I wonder, what the best um, treatment is for the patient, whether to uh, keep these teeth or to even sacrifice these lateral incisors. So extract them and then bring down the canine um, in this area. So that's still to be determined by the ordering clinician, but in terms of the radiographic findings, um, it's, uh, uh, been very uh, interesting to say the least. Um, lately, I've been seeing a lot of uh, impacted teeth with associated root resorptions. It's quite um, just ironically, and it's I'm sure it's coincidental. But again, that's what I want you to take away from this volume. Uh, you can see the mesially tipped angulation of these canines bilaterally, and tooth number six has made it down a little bit more so than tooth number 11. Okay, thank you so much once again for your attention and be sure to watch, subscribe and watch my future videos and I will talk to you next time. Take care.